Good morning and welcome. My name is Kat Breet. A better life begins with a better career. And that's why we're here every Tuesday and Thursday with you to talk about how to get more freedom, money, and fun out of work. All month long, we've been celebrating women who dared. And I am so excited to introduce you to our sixth woman who dared uh, today, Alice Hyman. Uh, before we do, I want to give a quick shout out. First of all, to those of you that are up early joining us live this morning, good morning. Um, look forward to getting your questions today. And secondly, to our sponsor for today, Minnesota Job Partners. Thanks for keeping the dream alive. All right. So women who dared, who dared to do big and scary things in their life, in their career, and it paid off big time. And Alice Hyman is a prime example. So today, she helps sales teams all over the world to grow their sales and skyrocket their value. 23 years ago, she dared to do some very scary things. All at once, in one year, she quit her job, bought a house, divorced her husband, started a business, all while being a mom. So it paid off. Today, Alice is one of the world's leading experts on B2B sales, according to Forbes. She was named number one in the category of best sales bloggers and number two on the most dynamic women in sales. Alice, good morning. How are things in California? Oh, my. Are, are we? Uh, I thought we were live. What? Good morning. Oh, good, good, good morning. Are um, you dressed? Like three o'clock in the morning here. I was just like getting ready to, you know, just kidding. It's 6 a.m. Hi, You're everybody. Wide awake. Look at you, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. Well, I don't know about that, but I do have plenty of coffee. Well, thank you for waking up so early to be with us this morning. I just, Ugh. you know, the whole month we've been lifting up Women Who Dared. It's Women's History Month, and there are millions of moms out there all over the world who had a tough 2020, and oh. so many of them, you know, and you probably know, 865,000 women quit in September oh. of last year. Um, 2.5 million have been pushed out of the workforce. One yes. in four are thinking about scaling back or quitting. And you and I, I know. know that starting a business might be the perfect solution. <laughs> yes. But it isn't I, always easy, is it? It's not easy, but um, sometimes it is a really great solution uh, for trying to be a mom, uh, a caretaker. Uh, and also make a living. Um, sometimes it's the only solution. Yeah, it is. And um, so what were you thinking in one year? <laughs> when, okay, so actually that was not how your first big career. Happen? How do you even do all that stuff in one year? Yeah, well, first you started out um, wiping tears. You were an elementary school teacher and then you got into global sales training. Tell us about that, first of all. Oh, my gosh. You know, you just never know where life is going to take you. And, and then I think that's the beautiful thing. Um, and, you know, I, I teach uh, at the University of Nevada, and I always tell my students, you don't have to know what you want to do forever. You just have to know what you want to do next. And so I think that, uh, you know, life can bring us on so many different journeys and we just need to be open to them. Yeah, I, I went to college. I was an art major. I had no idea what I wanted to do. Um, I thought, how am I going to make a living being an art, an artist? So um, I talked to a few counselors and did a little you know, research. And I thought, well, I'll be a teacher because then I can do art with kids and I like kids and I like art. And so I studied education and then I got into this amazing program at Indiana University. They only chose 40 of us, 40 of us out of like hundreds to be in this very specialized program for special education. And so I got a really good education and I did go into the public schools and teach for 13 years before I went into business. Although little known secret, it's not exactly true because even while I was teaching that entrepreneurial spirit kicked in and I started several nonprofits as well as a for-profit. And I started a, a resource center for uh, parents and teachers called Book Adventures. So, you know, I'm just a crazy person, I guess. I mean, I was pregnant, my husband lost his job and I started a 
a bookstore. You know, like what was I thinking? That's the, you know, <laughs> talk about women who dared. I don't know what comes over me, but <laughs> I just go do it. Well, and uh, so you went from wiping tears to wiping male tears. No, I'm just kind of kidding. Well, I mean, honestly, so then you went. Story. Um, I have had a few grown men in sales cry, and it's mm -hmm. like, wow, hey, guys, no crying in baseball or sales. <laughs> so um, tell us what you do for a living. Oh my gosh, I have the most fun job. I mean, it was super fun when I taught little kids too. I love that as well. And I've been so lucky in my career to do things that I really enjoy and wake up every day and can't wait to do them. Uh, what I do now is I work with the CEOs of companies that have a business to business sale. They're typically very innovative and they need to scale their sales. So they need to double in size in a short period of time. And so they've got to build a sales organization that can manage that growth. So there's a lot of pieces, as you know, to growing, but um, typically you need some salespeople for sure, or a distribution network of some kind. Somebody's got to go sell the stuff, right? So the companies I work with are usually, oh, 10 to maybe 30 years old. And occasionally they're a startup, but usually they're more mature, but they have some pressure on them because usually they've taken on some equity of some type or they're wanting to exit. And so I get to help CEOs really make their dreams come true. They tell me what they want, what value they want for their company. And I figure out a sales plan to help make sure that happens. So now you've been doing, you've been flying around the world for 25 years, I oh, think. Yeah. And you've been doing virtual training also for 10 years. So 2020 was a shock to the system, but not as much for you, but for a lot of your clients. Oh, yes. Who yes. are used to shaking hand to hand. So what have you been seeing as the biggest challenges and the biggest the best solutions for sales teams right now? Well, you know, I've been delivering this way, like we are doing right now for years since that software was invented pretty much. And even before when it was, you know, virtual conference room kind of stuff, we didn't call it virtual back then, you know, we call it uh, video conferencing. But so I'm very familiar with it. But uh, 2020 was an interesting year for everyone, some really bad, some really good and some in between. For me, the biggest difference was I wasn't traveling three times a month and I wasn't with people, which, you know, usually I'm leading a conference and the MC, I'm running training, I'm keynote speaking, I'm at my client's office for a few days, you know, hanging out with them and doing all kinds of interesting things. And I just sat in this chair. <laughs> now, um, yeah, I know a lot of us did the same. And so uh, that's that wasn't as easy um, in a lot of ways. But for my clients, it's just been a wide variety of things. And what I love is those who dared to do something different who dared to try something. And I was right along there with them, helping them strategize and cheering them on because, oh my gosh, you know, they just couldn't continue doing business as usual. They had to make changes. So I feel like this has been, 2020 was a bold year in so many ways, um, bold socially, politically, economically, and definitely bold for those small business owners you know, my my clients are under a hundred million dollars uh, in revenue usually, uh, so they're still considered small companies, maybe creeping into midsize. But it's you know, you lose like everything stops. Yeah, you know, what are you gonna do? You've got to make bold moves. You've got to dare. You've got to dare to do something different. Yes, you do. So let's let's talk a little bit more about so. You decided to leave the security of a full time, highly successful career. Uh, with Miller Hyman, start your own business, and you were a mom, so you still had people relying on you. What was the mo What was the hardest part for you about doing the scariest or the hardest part about getting started on your own? You know, so many things happened that year. It's sort of like a blur, and I'm sure you've had years like this too. And I know a lot of you listening have as well. But it's just like everything had to happen, right? So I didn't plan to get a divorce, buy a house, 
and, um, you know, be a single mom <laughs> and quit my job and start a new company. I didn't plan all that. Um, and sometimes I call myself an accidental entrepreneur because in both cases, both times I started a company when I was teaching and I started. And then after that, it, it was I didn't have a business plan. I'm not telling you to not have a business plan. If you're going to start a business, call me. I'll help you figure out how you get a business plan. But uh, I didn't. So that's the truth. And I think there's plenty of entrepreneurs like me out there who will tell you that they didn't really have a, a good plan when they started. So uh, what was I thinking? Well, um, my marriage wasn't working out. I had a two and a half year old. Um, I needed to get out of the marriage. I couldn't, you know, the house that we lived in, we had to sell. I went and bought a new house because I had a good job at Miller Hyman, um, which by the way, yes, um, Steve Hyman's my dad. And so um, some of you already knew that. So I had a good job. I was being paid well. Um, you know, I used to be a teacher and God love them. Teachers work for a, a very small amount of money. Uh, so now I finally had a good income and I qualified for this beautiful home and I was going to, you know, sell the other house, gave the ex half of it, went and purchased the house. And then um, things being what they were, my family wanted to sell the business and some other things occurred. And there I was. And I was like, okay, well, I quit because this isn't working and you're selling and I, ah. so now luckily I had already qualified for the mortgage because if I had quit, I wouldn't have qualified for the mortgage. So that part was done. The house was supposed to be done in August. It wasn't done until October. I had a almost three-year-old child. Um, and yeah, I was just like, holy cow, what am I doing? So, you know, in the middle of it, I mean, there were a lot of tears. I'm not going to tell you there weren't. Um, but I have family to help me, luckily, and I know some people don't, but I did. And so we got it figured out. I, I moved in uh, in October. I incorporated my new company in October. And uh, like the month before that, my kids started kindergarten. Wow. I mean, it makes me tired just talking about it. And oh, and my divorce, my, my divorce was final in March. The house closed in um, October. Will went to kindergarten in September. You know, the business started in October. It was like, boom, 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 boom. Wow. But here you are. Here I am. You survived. Life on the other side is grand. So to all the people li listening right now who have lost their jobs, maybe their marriages are falling apart, but they might even be about to lose their home. I mean, let's be honest, a lot of millions of people have had massive upheaval, yes, absolutely. change, thrust upon them. So what is one thing that carried you through those darkest days? Yeah, so this is a tough one. Uh, and I think for everybody, you've kind of got to dig in and find your own thing. Um, I have a really strong family structure. And so I'm very grateful for that. But I know sometimes people don't, or even when you do, maybe you feel like you can't reach out to them or you're embarrassed or something like that. So th there's two things that I can tell you made a huge difference for me. And it still wasn't easy. One is my family was there and was able to help me. And the other is I had a way to connect deeply with myself. Um, you know, for some of you, that might be a, a more spiritual way. It might be through your religion. Um, it might be through meditation. But um, I had and still have something called heart math that I practice that helps me connect my head and my heart and my body so that my sympathetic and parasympathetic systems work well together because we, the stress is there. I mean, it's stressful buying a house. It's stressful getting a divorce. It's hard to be a mom. <laughs> it's stressful starting a new business. You know, all these things are out there stressing you. I mean, it's stressful to get in the car and drive somewhere just sometimes. So it's always there, but you don't have to let it impact you. You can put your shield up right? And go, oh, that's happening. But you don't have to suck in all the ick that comes with it. And I use heart math, heart, H-E-A-R-T, heart, math, M-A-T-H, like what you learned in school, look it up. Um, they have lovely, lovely tools for you to use to be in touch, mind, body, and spirit. 
Um, and then again, you know, the meditation helped a lot, exercise, um, you know, religion, things, things that whatever it is that you are connected to that helps you believe in yourself. That's really what it's all about, Kat. I mean, it, you got to believe in yourself and you've got to remind yourself every day. I am so lucky because I'm so positive. And, and by the way, I forgot to tell you during that time, just after a little, after I bought the house and had the business going really well, I got really sick and it took me almost 10 years to recover. Whoa. So, I mean, it's not like, you know, people, oh, blah, blah, blah. yeah, it's not all that you guys. It was hard. It was really hard. I had a five-year-old and I was sick mm -hmm. and I couldn't even work for, uh, for about a year and a half or more. I could only work a little bit. I couldn't travel. I couldn't sit in a chair to eat. I had to, um, I had to stand up to eat. I was in excruciating pain 24 seven, couldn't sleep. So, you know, I mean, you just never know what's behind it, right? But oh. you see me with a smile on my face, Kat, because again, mm -hmm. I help myself. Cause really, you know, no one else can do it for you. You gotta help yourself. Yeah. You gotta dare to get the help you need when you need it. Right. And I, you really just kick things off beautifully saying, you don't have to have all the answers. You're, you don't know what you're going to be doing a year from now. Just take the next no. step. Right. That's just right. take that next step right now. Sometimes right. that's all you can do and that's okay. Um, so Eric says, good morning, Lenny, Gina. Hello. Hello, everyone. Welcome. So what time is it where you are? <laughs> yeah, not in California. Actually, let's see. Is there More anybody coffee. in California who got up early uh, with Alice today? So, um, oh, yeah, by the way, I'm in Reno, Nevada, not California. Oh, Super. yes, yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. I live at 5,300 feet in the Sierra Nevada mountains. It is absolutely gorgeous here. I live very close to Lake Tahoe. I live 20 minutes from where I ski. I am a lucky person. But, you know, I want to say about, again, women who dared, I made my luck. Yeah. You know, I worked hard to be where I am. And it's not easy. Okay. Yeah. It's not easy. That's the truth, but you can do it. You can. And life is hard, whether you're at the mercy of some boss or at the mercy of your own business, why not at least drive your own car? Right. Um, right. You know, so wonderful. All right. So uh, questions y'all, we have got one of the <laughs> leading sales experts in the stinking world <laughs> with us from Reno this morning. What questions do you have to her if you're in sales, if you're a business owner, if you're thinking about starting your own business, whether it yes. be solopreneur or you have huge dreams to have a worldwide company, whatever it is. Um, Alice has seen it all. She's trained world-class sales, sales teams. Bring your questions to her. While y'all start popping in your questions for her, I have one more question for you. <laughs> yeah. So when we were chatting for the first, by the way, shout out to Vivica Von Rosen for introducing Woo! us. Yeah. Vivica, another yeah. top sales leader, uh, one of the best sales voices to, to follow out there as well. Good morning, Vivica. She might still be sleeping herself. Yes. Um, <laughs> all right. So you said to me that one of the things that's given you the, the most courage in your career and your work is doing scary things in your personal life. And <laughs> one of those happened in Patagonia with 11 other women. Tell us about that. Wow, yeah. So I really love to be outdoors. I ski, I sail, I hike. I think everybody should be outdoors. I know some of you are going, oh, I don't really like it so much. Try it. Be outdoors. It's so good for your soul. It's so good for your eyes. It's so good for your health. Be outdoors. Um, so I love to be outdoors. Um, while I was sick during that time, a friend of mine, a good friend since fifth grade, her name is Diane Terry, and we're still good friends today, um, talked to me into going on an adventure. Now, she has a an adventure business, and it's specifically for women who want to go on adventures. And I had been saying for years I was going to go with her. Well, I was starting to feel a little bit better. Um, this was maybe, you know, five years after I was sick and uh, feeling a little bit better. And she said, why don't you come to Patagonia with us and raft the Futalafu River? Now, any river rafters out there, please shout out. Because if you know anything about rafting, this is like, 
a rafter's dream to raft the food of foo, right? What did I know? So I was like, sure, <laughs> I'll do it. <laughs> so I get in a plane and fly, you know, to, I think we flew, I don't know, into um, one of the bigger cities in, in Chile and uh, had some fun. And then we took literally a train, a plane, a boat, a car, <laughs> and then an ox cart <laughs> into the wilderness. Um, the ox cart carried our stuff. We actually had to hike in. Mind you, I'm in excruciating pain 24 seven still at this point. It was a little bit less, but I was still in pain. And I hiked in with these 11 women and the guides. And we uh, literally rafted the river for, I don't know, eight or 10 days. And as you're rafting down this river, uh, we're talking about class four and five rapids for you rafters out there. I had never even been in a raft before. So they suit us all up. And the first thing they do is they teach us how to dump the thing, right? So you have to dump it. You're in this freezing cold water, like Tahoe cold, if anybody knows Tahoe. And then you have to drag yourself back up over the edge of this raft and pull yourself back in. Well, I'm not very strong at this point because I've been ill. And so I'm thinking, how in the heck am I going to do this? So I did it. And we taught, you know, they taught us how to help each other get back into the raft. So we're ready to go. Um, we're in the middle of nowhere. We've got all our gear with us in wet bags, enough gear for eight days, eight to 10 days. I can't remember how long it was, but it was, it was many days. Um, and we had to have every single thing we needed with us. So here we go down the Fudalafu River. Now there was one guy in a kayak who was kind of, in case anybody fell out, he could like kayak over there and go get us. We only had one person fall out. Um, <laughs> we had two different rafts and yes, we did have guides with us. So we weren't just foolishly by ourselves rafting class five and six, four and five, but then there were some class six rapids, which means you can't raft. You have to ghost the raft. So I learned how to do that as well. You have to take all your gear out. You have to tie up these rafts in a special way. And then you kind of walk them through the rapid. It's it's just the craziest thing you've ever seen. And then of course, every night we had a camp um, and it was, it was really nice because the guides actually did make our food, which was lovely. Oh, and I nice. gotta say one secret about that. These guys, they were like, you know, buff. buffed, you buffed, you know, like <laughs> really, you know, river rafted and kind of really sun kissed <laughs> <laughs> a whole trip better right um but anyway we felt safe but it was hard you know it was really hard and I, I had a bad shoulder at the time that pain i couldn't paddle all the time like everyone else could so um i had to sit in the middle sometimes and or i had to sit in the back and call the orders or you know do different things but they figured it out and i did it wow. and uh, along with that there was a lot of hiking up some pretty steep uh, mountains and stuff to get to where we camped. And um, so it was an interesting trip. And I'll tell you, I, I think when you do things like that, you know, you can push yourself to a limit and you can do something. Yeah. And that makes you believe in yourself. Yeah, it does. So go whitewater rafting, everybody. Yeah. yeah. I, thought, I thought I was a tough <laughs> out of a plane or whatever suits you, you know. Yeah. Now that I'm not interested in. I've done whitewater in Alaska, but not class five. And anyway, but yeah, I don't know about the plane. Oh, great white shark diving, but a plane. But you're right. I'd believe in myself more if I were to jump out of a good plane. So yeah. we've got some questions rolling in. Um, so Kirsty wants to know where should she go? Where do you recommend for the best entry level sales training? Oh gosh. So if you're just starting out, um, Oh, you know, it's too bad our colleges aren't teaching this. I te do teach at the University of Nevada and I do teach a sales class um, in the entrepreneurship minor. And there are some universities around the country that are starting to have programs. Howard Dover has a great program. Joelle Laban has a great program. Um, you can go to, um, to salesfoundation.org and you can see all of the colleges that offer sales programs and sales certificates. And if maybe one of them is near you, you could take a couple classes. But I would say find a mentor, find someone who's been in sales for a while. And depending on what kind of sales you're in, if you're in business to business or business to consumer, maybe you could chat in and tell me. Um, then, you know, it's a little bit different, but I would say find a mentor who knows 
how to do what it is you want to do. And then you have someone to ask questions to. But the thing, I think a couple of good books, uh, Daniel Pink wrote a book called um, To Sell as Human. Sorry, <laughs> it is early. Daniel Pink wrote To Sell is Human. Please read that. It's a quick read and it's lovely. It's a great book. Uh, you'll get a lot out of it. I like uh, Keenan's Gap Selling for New Sellers. Uh, but what you want to remember is that selling is a helping profession. So I came right out of teaching, and, and, you know, as Kat said earlier, from wiping tears, right? I was catapulted into the corporate world. And what I can tell you is that really selling is a helping profession. What you're trying to do is solve problems. So talk to people, just be human, like stop selling, just don't sell. Talk to human beings ask them what they need and see if you can provide that or not. And if you can, you'll get a sale, right? So just be as human as you can. Yes, you need to know something about your product and service, but more than that, you need to know about the people you're selling to and help, how you can help them. And if you can help them, like I said, you're gonna get a sale. Yeah, there's a little more to it than that. Don't get me wrong, but start off by just, being a person who cares about people and wants to hear about what their needs are and listen and see if you can provide for those needs. And if you can, it's all, you know, it's going to be a lot easier than you showing up and saying, I have all this stuff. Want to buy it? Doesn't work. Excellent advice. Um, absolutely. And I, when I was first starting in sales, I had a really hard time getting over the mental block. I was, you know, visions of being a sleazy salesperson and that shift to, there are people out there who need my help today. Exactly. Everything. So excellent advice for everybody. Um, all right. So let's see here. Oh, Gina would like to know, number one, do you meditate? And if so, what's your favorite time of day to meditate? Um, I do meditate. Um, I am getting better at doing it more often. <laughs> I sometimes do it in the morning. I don't really have a time of day. I do it in the middle of the day. I like this app called Headspace. I don't know if you've heard of it, but it's pretty popular now. Um, and they even have a Netflix show on it. I just heard cat. So I, don't, but anyway, it's called Headspace because I thought I couldn't meditate because I'm such a busy person and my mind is so busy. And I thought you had to clear your mind. I'm thinking, this mind will never be clear. There's no way I can meditate. <laughs> but um, using the Headspace app, I did learn to meditate. And, and using some of the heart math techniques, it's similar to meditating, but not exactly the same. First of all, don't expect to clear your head. That's ridiculous. Thoughts come in, they go out. What you're trying to do is just be calm. I will tell you, I've been practicing yoga for over 20 years. That helps a ton. Shavasana mm -hmm. is my favorite position in case anyone was wondering what my favorite yoga position is. Shavasana is what you do at the end when you lay flat on the floor like you're dead and just rest. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's a gift. It's a, that is a gift. It is a gift and it is a meditation. So even if you for one minute can sit still and breathe, that's meditating. And so I like to do it throughout the day, just like literally push back away from my desk Breathe, close my eyes, focus on my breathing for a bit. And that's a good meditation. So I do it different times of the day. I can't really say that I do it any one special time of the day. Some people like wake up every morning, write in their journal, meditate. That's not me. I do something different every morning. <laughs> Well, like I, knew, <laughs> I knew the time with you would just fly by. So as we wrap things up this morning, um, final question from Steve. You have all sorts of sales secrets. What is your favorite <laughs> one that changes the game for most people? Oh, gosh. Uh, I know it's hard. A lot of sales secrets that I wish weren't secret. I guess the biggest one is that sales really should be easy. If you're struggling, if it's hard, if it's a grind, like I don't want to hear one more salesperson tell me it's a grind. It's just a grind. That's how you sell. It's just a grind. You know, there is work to it. Of course, there's work to anything worth doing, right? Um, but if you make a plan and you execute that plan consistently, sales will be easy. And I guess maybe the secret is talk to the people you know. So we're so busy as salespeople calling people that we don't know. 
emailing people that we don't know, connecting on LinkedIn to people that we don't know. That's hard, especially now, because every salesperson who's trapped in their office is trying to reach out cold. So talk to the people you know, like literally everybody you know, your aunts, your uncles, your sisters, your brothers, your cousins, your friends, talk to the people you know, because they know people who they can introduce you to. And if you go to my blog, there's actually just, just a search, talk to the people you know, and I've made a little blog with a recording to show you how to actually do that and how to tap into your LinkedIn network to actually talk to the people you know. So I guess that's the secret. It's like cold outreach, is it necessary? Yeah, it's necessary, but my gosh, think if you could even get introductions to five people a week, how much better your sales would be. So the big secret is talk to the people you know. Sales should be easier. It shouldn't be hard. It shouldn't be a grind. Well, and back to your question, Kirsty, where should you go for entry-level sales? Follow Alice Hyman, one of the top 15. <laughs> I mean, I kicked it off, right? She's one of the world's best leader, you know, number one in the category of best sales bloggers. So go find Alice Hyman, follow her, stalk her, listen to her. So Alice, where can we find you? Well, you can find me on LinkedIn. That's the easiest place because you can message me there and dare to message me. I dare you to message me. But the thing you have to remember is when you ask me to connect, you have to say, I saw you on Kat's show because that way I'll accept you immediately. Otherwise you're going to sit in my queue until I have time to research you because I don't just accept everybody. And um, that's just because, you know, it, you're trying to build a network that is a strong, leverageable network and accepting people you don't know doesn't help. So tell me you saw me on Cat's show and then dare to ask me a sales question or ask me about anything and I'll be happy to share about myself or about resources or do whatever I can to be of help to you. And I double dog dare you to ask Alice how you can help her and watch the conversation take off. So you can find her on LinkedIn. Stefan has put her LinkedIn address. He put alicehyman.com. And you are, you're you're going to be on Clubhouse to those of you oh, that gosh. are part of Clubhouse. Um, we're going to see you tonight at yeah. 5 o'clock Pacific. What are you talking about? Yeah, thank you so much for reminding me about that, Kat, because this is really important to me. So um, I have a new friend who I met virtually. We've never met in person yet, but this is one of the great things about 2020. I have met so many amazing people online. I met Hang Black. Actually, she uh, was a speaker at uh, Sales 3.0, which is a conference that I am the MC of. And she spoke, and I don't know, I can't even remember all, but we've gotten to be good friends. She wrote a book called Embrace the edge. She really wrote it for minority women who dared. And so I love her so much and I love the book. Please read it. Um, she and I have started some conversations with a few other of our friends on Clubhouse. And so now every Thursday at 5 p.m. we're there. Now we're not talking about sales strictly. We're talking about diversity, equity, and inclusion. Because in sales, we need more diversity. We need more women. We need more people of color. We need more people who think differently. Uh, we need more diversity in sales. And so that's why it matters so much to me. And there's a few reasons all uh, other than that that you'll learn if you get on Clubhouse with us. But tonight is really special. We were going to talk about women in history because it's Women History Month. And we we're talking about women who inspired us and all of that. But unfortunately, uh, recently you may have heard that there were uh, many Asians killed in Atlanta. And this is, you know, just really people who don't understand other people and having this anti-Asian sentiment. And it's really awful. I mean, we've had it happening, you know, in the Black community with Black Lives Matter and just people not caring about other people and doing horrible things. So tonight we're actually going to talk about this, you know, diversity, inclusion and equity in a bit of a different way by spotlighting that and talking about how important it is to understand each other. So these kinds of things just don't happen. We don't have this hatred that's going on in America. So I hope you'll join us at 5 p.m. on Clubhouse. Look for Hang with Hang. That's our conversation. And um, you posted it on your LinkedIn profile, and I actually I shared it on mine as well. So, Thank you. Um, 
Yeah. So Alice, thank you so much for waking up early with us this morning and sharing your wisdom and your energy. Bye, thank coffee. you to everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks to all of our live listeners. And hey, if you liked the conversation, please share it with the universe. It's free. The replay is on my profile and my YouTube channel. And tune in next Tuesday. I will have Kathy Hansen, another woman who dared of back pocket strategy, talking about how to negotiate for what you're worth next Tuesday, same Ooh, time, same back channel. That. All right. I all dare right. you guys to dare yourselves to do something. Bye, Kat. Bye. Have a great day, everyone.